So we talked about the one eyeshadow that you need, and I helped a few of you find that one eyeshadow, and we might come back to that at a later stage. And we also talked about how to prep and prime your lid and the best eye makeup brushes that you might want to try. But let's talk about the other tools that can really help with your eye makeup. And I'm gonna start with eyelash curlers. And I know that some of you are like, Sinead, I don't use an eyelash curler, I don't like it. Just wait, I want to share some information because I feel like it's a very love-hate relationship that people have with eyelash curlers. And I'm a little bit of an eyelash curler geek. So I want to show you how to pick a good one that's gonna work for you. Let's go through a few different eyelash curlers and let's start with this one. I don't like these ones. This is a spring-loaded curler. You can tell it's spring-loaded because of the distance between the handles. Now, even though this is super cute, because look at it going up the stairs, it's super cute. I, I just can't, I cannot handle these ones. Also, it, it kind of looks like a runner trying to pass a finishing line. It's so cute, it really is. And a lot of people love them. But for me, spring-loaded ones are a little scary. Basically, the spring-loaded ones give you a tighter squeeze because you're pulling the handles together and what this is going to do is then create that curl and that lift however this has happened to me on more than one occasion see those little caps that sit over the handles yeah sometimes those caps can slip off and when they slip off they pull your lashes out with them now the reason they have these caps on these spring-loaded eyelash curlers is because you need that extra control to grip so you can squeeze it together. But unfortunately, sometimes the glue that's inside can go from hot to cold and one little knock will make them slide off. And then basically it's like waxing off your eyelashes. <laughs> I'm not talking about this particular brand, it was two other brands. One of them, I can't even remember the name, and then one of them was discontinued, so thankfully they're gone. They're also not great for people with grip issues because you do have to squeeze it. I have fibromyalgia, so I just find that sometimes it just takes too much for my hands to do it, on a regular basis especially. I'm also not a big fan of these open handles. Sometimes they can kind of pinch the same one with the double ones. Sometimes they can kind of pinch the skin, which is really unfortunate. So that's all about the handles and the type of spring, but what you also want to watch out for is the top plate. Do so you see how this top plate is attached? It's not in one piece. It's sitting on either side. Now this top plate is very important. And over time, some of these ones that are sitting in can start to gradually move and then you're going to get an uneven curl. So it's not very long lasting and therefore not worth investing in. So now that we know what to avoid, let's go through a few that I do actually like. But this is actually the top rated one. People swear by this. It's very popular and it takes all of the boxes. It's got a good handle. It's a good top plate. It's in one piece. It has a good grip. So yes, this is worth the investment if you have that type of money. Because once you find a good eyelash curler, you are going to have it for pretty much life. We also have this MAC one. See, once again, see how the plate is set? This is going to last for you. Now the sponge on this one is a little higher, which I find that they kind of wear down a little sooner. But the great thing about using a brand like MAC is because it's so well known, you'll easily find some replacement sponges. But my absolute go-to favorite is the Inglot one. I've had this for 10 years still works perfectly, perfect shape, perfect hold, absolutely love it. Now, if you have naturally curly lashes and you don't have to worry about that, maybe your only problem is that your mascara always smudges. Well, what you can try is something like this, which is a lash guard. Basically, it prevents your mascara from getting on your skin as you're applying it. So you hold it with one hand and apply your mascara with the other. It's also great if you are in very hot, humid conditions where your mascara takes forever to dry. Now, say you've applied your mascara, you've curled your lashes, it looks great, but you want to apply some falsies, but you really are struggling, it might not be you. It might not be your technique. It might not be anything to do with your skill level. It might be the glue and the tool that you are using to apply your false lashes. So let me start off by talking about the tools that I would recommend. Now I'm kind of known for these tweezers. I've been using them for years. For some reason, the brand stopped making them. I do not know why, because they're amazing. I have seen them online in a few different places, but I'm a little uneasy about sharing the link. So if you do have a link to this that you have successfully ordered from and the site is all perfectly fine, definitely let me know. But these are the ones that I use a lot. However, another one that I really like is this one. This is great because it's really long, meaning I have lots of control. So it's great for just getting right 
point in there. Also works on applying it on yourself, but also other people. So it works for everybody. And you'd be surprised about how easy it is to apply lashes when you have the right tool. Now, eyelash tweezers are different from eyebrow tweezers. You can use eyebrow tweezers to apply your lashes, but you can't use eyelash tweezers to remove hair because it doesn't have that same grip. Eyelash tweezers are actually more blunt, rounded, more smooth on the end. They don't grip the hair in the same way. So if you find that as you're applying your lashes with your tweezers, it's holding more to the tweezers and not onto your eye, it's probably because those tweezers are designed to grip more. What you want to do is swap them out for an eyelash tweezer instead, and it makes such a difference. Another thing that can really affect your application is your eyelash glue. There are so many different types of glues out there. You really just have to find out what works best for you. Now this was the original. This was the go-to one for a long time. It was in a tube form, a little runny. It was kind of tricky to use at the beginning. They also do have a brush on version, which is much easier. And it came in a light and a dark, which was great because sometimes the original, even though it's supposed to dry clear, can kind of go a little bit white. So it's nice having the darker one there because it kind of blends everything away. But these are very liquidy and they do take a while to get used to. Even though I will say that once they dry, they are the most long lasting. But if you find it very messy, there are some other options too. This one is a liner version. So basically it's like a liquidy felt tip liner, but with glue. This is really handy for traveling because you can do those little top-ups. You know how sometimes the edges just lift? Well, you can just pop a little bit of the glue on with the little liner, press it back down, and you're good to go. Not great for long wear use. They don't last as long as the liquid tube ones, but they are really handy to have in your car or in your bag on a night out or a wedding. You basically paint it on like you would liner and then your lashes just stick to it. Now my absolute go-to favorite that I would swear by is the Bond and Seal by Kiss. This is my go-to. One side is a glue and the other side is a sealant. Now this is only good if you apply your lashes underneath and press upwards. And it's funny how popular that has become. I've been doing it for a really long time before this product even existed, but this product makes it so much easier. It's a tiny mascara wand on one side and it's basically like glue mascara. You paint it on just like mascara and then you press your lashes upwards and it holds in place. Once your lashes are on there, you then take the other side, which is a clear sealant, and basically just run this over the edge. This is just going to remove any of that stickiness on your lashes. Nine times out of ten, this is what I'm going to be using to apply my lashes. Now you can also sleep in this style of lashes as well that you apply with this particular glue, but they have this nighttime sealant. It's very similar to the sealant that is on the other side, but it's a little runnier, and basically you apply this before you go to bed, and it just seals in the lashes so that you can sleep because there's nothing worse than waking up with like sticky lashes that are just moved all over the place. So it just helps a little bit. And then we also have the pre-glued ones. Now, I'm not usually a big fan of pre-glues, okay? Never really liked them, but these Kiss lashes have this like fork type of a hold. So it's not just sticky. It's not just pre-glued. It has these lines that create this grip. I am obsessed with this technology. I wish I could meet the person who came up with this because I'm like, this is so smart and it really works and just, oh, chef's kiss. And the brand is called Kiss. It does actually come in lots of different styles, but I really hope they come out with more because I need more variety. Now I've put some of my other favorites, like my favorite mascara and stuff like that in the description box. But if you'd like me to share some of my favorite false eyelashes, the different brands I like using, definitely let me know as well. And as always, my friends, if there's any more help that you need, just comment below this video and I will try my best to help find something that's gonna work best for you. Remember my friends, be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.